I think capacity leads to everything. If you feel capable, you'll take on whatever life has for you. If you find the confidence in what you put your efforts into, or from what you practice, from what you put your efforts into, then, all of a sudden, you can do things you didn't think were possible. You're having experiences that were outside of your level of consciousness. Every time we create new awareness, we create a new space to practice. That's a new elevation of your, the way you could be conscious of what you know to be. All of what I teach and share is not like I, this was in my mind when I first started practicing yoga. But through practicing yoga, all of this has found its way into my being. All of the metaphors of the practice have come from doing the practice. And the metaphors I try to carry with me almost everywhere that I go. Because it, it considers the understanding of narrative and the shifting of um, the shifting of ourselves and all the different characters that we play and that we embody and that we choose to participate with. Because there's many forms of you and there's many forms of me. And the forms of us that we find, the forms of us that we uh, tend to or find, you know, the most enjoyable to be in the forms we try to stay in for the longest. So, as you really try to find these different forms of yourself, you start to uh, hopefully feel more embodied and capable in how you want to experience life. And I think that opens up so many doors in terms of your spiritual experience because if you're limited in what you find capable of doing, you may not ever feel like leaving your house. But the more capable you feel, the more experiences you'll have, the more experiences you have, the more times your consciousness can be altered. And when your consciousness is altered, then it gives you a new perspective. And that new perspective is a framework against all the other things that you do. And so all the perspectives that you find then give you a chance to measure. And as you measure, you start to understand, um, you start to measure up, you know? So what you like and you don't like, and, and again, stepping into what I was saying before. Until you find, you know, your whys, your root causes for the things you like to do and, and like to be, um, it's really hard to truly be yourself. And, and be, being yourself takes a lot of effort and a lot of understanding because again, you have this internal you or this internal you. And you're aiming to find a way to bring that into the world in a way that's digestible, understandable, or can connect with other beings. Because we're all in this for connection, for union, and for unity within all of us. And there's a commonality that we all share, and there's also a commonality that we share more with specific, specific people. And it narrows down and narrows down, of course, <clears throat> in terms of the people that are closest to you. However, when you really start to find yourself, the people that you end up finding yourself with and the connections you end up creating are more and more and more authentic because they're not based on, um, on a period of time in your life or convenience or the spaces that you spend your time. They're truly based on um, vibration and a universal connection and a shared interest or a passion or just a, a, a natural love for the way you choose to live. And I think the way you choose to live is such an interesting thing to consider because we all have the same limitations, which are time and energy. And some of us have a lot of time and some of us have a little. And I'm just talking about free time in the moment, time in general, because who knows how long it is. But time and energy are the limitations. And so how you choose to apply yourself within those constraints really creates your human experience. And to be the most immersed you can be in your human experience, it's really, you know, all about trying to find, at least in my opinion, um, this higher level of purpose in which you, what you pursue. And so that's why I think moving through all the series and all the poses is so beautiful, and why I speak so much to preference and inspiration within them. Because you are putting the value into every pose. Not me, 
not a teacher, not a book, not uh, even a method of practice. If you believe in handstand and you pursue that and that gives you something and that something gives you peace, then what can take that away from you? And how powerful is that? Because it's something that you pursued and something that you found because you weren't born with it. It's something that you had to find through being. And you had to find this one very specific activity that gives you peace. And how ridiculous is that? And how beautiful is that at the same time? And that activity could also be anything, right? But for whatever reason, for you or you or you or somebody else, it's yoga. And within yoga, it's backbending. And so you've found a way through your conscious experiences to find a, a series of poses or a series of movements or a series of patterns or rhythms or dances that put you into a state of peace, into a state of tranquility. That's tapping into your highest vibration of self. And I think that's like uh, phenomenal because think of all the things you could do or you could have tried to do. And for whatever reason, it's this. And you found this and this carries you in this beautiful way. And so that's what I think the purpose of the practice is. Thank you. Thank you all so much.